All right, let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, firearms. Uh, when transferring firearms, you must first determine which set of rules applies to the firearms in question. Title I weapons include commonly owned rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Uh, so if you think about grandpa's hunting rifle, hunting shotgun, uh, generally that's going to be a Title I weapon. Now, your grandpa may be here hunting with a fully automatic Tommy gun, but generally that's not the case. Uh, there is no registry for firearms in Texas. Uh, so to transfer Title I weapons to your trust, you would use an assignment of personal property or a bill of sale uh, that will cover your firearms just like it was the rest of your personal property. Now, Title II weapons require a tax stamp, and that includes six different types of weapons. Uh, the first is automatic weapons uh, or machine guns. Uh, the next is short barreled rifles, rifles that have less than a 16 inch barrel. Uh, the next would be short barreled shotguns, uh, shotguns that have less than an 18 inch barrel. Uh, sound suppressors or silencers, or even the parts to assemble one. Any other weapons, uh, that would include explosives such as grenades or firearms with a bore diameter TD 50 caliber or a metric 12.7 millimeter that does not qualify as having sporting use. Uh, or destructive devices. This is kind of a catch-all category for things like canes and pens that can function as a firearm. And I was very surprised to find that teenage boys are not considered destructive devices. <laughs> Transferring Title II weapons requires an ATF application uh, known as a Form 4, and that is submitted with a $200 tax. And after a little period of time, hopefully the ATF approves that transfer. Now, a Title II weapons should not be transferred into a regular revocable living trust. They need to be transferred into a specialized gun trust because there are so many different rules that apply to how these items are managed and distributed. You do not want to turn your loved ones into felons. And there's a couple of ways that this could be done pretty easily. Uh, you could put your trustee in a position where they unknowingly give a firearm to a beneficiary that lives in a state that prohibits that type of firearm. Um, you don't want to put your trustee in a position to do that. Um, you also don't want your trustee distributing to a family member that may have a criminal record, as that's illegal. Um, generally speaking, if you were transferring a Title I firearm uh, to a, a non-family member, uh, it may be a good idea to have a gun store process that transaction. That way we can do a background check to ensure the recipient is not prohibited from receiving weapons. Uh, if you're transferring to a family member, uh, that formality may not be as necessary, uh, but you could just have them sign something saying that they have never been convicted of a felony, they've never been convicted of domestic or family violence, they've never been adjudicated or diagnosed with mental issues, they've never been placed in a mental institution, They've never renounced their U.S. citizenship. Uh, they're not a fugitive from justice. They're not an illegal alien. Uh, they're not subject to a restraining order for harassing, stalking, or threatening an intimate partner. Uh, they're at least 18 for being involved in the transfer of a shotgun or rifle. They're at least 21 for being involved in the transfer of a handgun. And for anyone living outside of Texas, that the transfer involved is not illegal in that person's state. You know, I wonder how many times a day does this happen in the United States? Son, uh, dad dies, son comes in to help mom from another state. And as he's starting to go back home, mom says, son, why don't you go ahead and take your dad's pistol? I never liked having that in the house. Son takes off and let's just say that he's going back to California and that particular firearm holds too many rounds for California law. Unfortunately, mom and son just became felons. They're both subject to up to $250,000 in fines per firearm and up to 10 years in prison per firearm. So the reason we ask people about firearms, we are trying to help your family avoid the legal problems that can result from illegal transfers. So when Title II weapons are ultimately transferred out of your trust, if they are going to a beneficiary, uh, it will still require ATF paperwork, uh, but you use a Form 5, which is a tax-exempt transfer. 
Uh, but if the trustee is selling the item out of the trust, that will require the form for a $200 tax, similar to what you pay to get it into the trust. Uh, the ATF will demand a background check on these transfers. Uh, so while the, uh, the contents of the uh, sworn statement uh, for Title I items applies, uh, you're not going to have to have somebody sign that. The ATF will take care of that. 